Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's Lightroom tutorial, we're going to take a look at dealing with overexposed images. So we take a look at the image that I've got open in Lightroom, you can see there are a few problems with it. The first and most obvious is the fact that it's completely overexposed. The second issue we have is where I was shooting from in the crowd, you can see that I've picked up someone's head. But I like the kind of composition of the actual artist themselves, so we'll crop that out, but I still need to deal with the overexposed problems. So let's start off just by cropping to exactly what I want, and then we can look at what we need to do to the rest of the image. So we'll just choose the crop tool and we'll just adjust this so I can get rid of most of the problematic head in the bottom corner. So we'll go for something like that and we'll hit done. So like I say, we can see that there's a lot of overexposed problems with this. And the first thing we need to do is we're gonna come up to the basics tab. And what we can do is we can just drop down the exposure to reduce some of that problem. So you can see it already starts to look better. We're still blowing out a little bit too much in the top and it still looks a little flat, but we can deal with all that. So let's try next of all, we're gonna go through and just increase some of the clarity to just give it a bit more definition. Uh, when we've got the center controls, we can deal the highlight shadows, whites and blacks. We can take a look and see which is gonna give us the best options. We can deal with the highlights and as you can see, we can drop that down and if we look up in the top left corner, you'll start to see some of the definition coming back into this blown out tree. We're not going to worry too much about making it look perfect because at the end of the day, we've got a nice soft bokeh effect there in the background. And that's allowing us to sort of pull focus to the actual main singer themselves. So that's going to work fine for me. I'm just going to set the blacks a little lower. And I'm just going to just give it a bit of extra color just by bumping up the vibrance. So the next thing we're gonna do is come down to the, le sorry, not lens correction. We're gonna come down to effects and the new option that we have available to us, which is dehaze. Now I'm gonna be pretty gentle with this because it can be quite um, a powerful effect if we're not careful with it. So I'm just gonna increase that ever so slightly and you can see what it's doing is it's gonna bump the definition in the hair just darken these various different elements down and really sort of pull that focus to the singer. So let's just adjust that ever so slightly. So you can see now we're getting a lot more contrast in this. We're already looking a lot better. Okay, so we're starting to get there, but I still think it looks just a little flat. So what I want to do is just pump up the whites a little bit just to give it a little bit more contrast in there, just a bit more highlight contrast. So we'll take that up to about, about plus 25, somewhere around there. Now it's not a massive difference, but it's enough to just make the overall image just pop that little bit more. Now while we have the effects panel open, what I'm gonna do is I wanna draw focus to the main character in this, this photograph. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of post crop vignetting in there, just to sort of darken the edges down a little bit and allow you to sort of focus on the singer and as you can see that kind of has the effect of making the the highlight areas not stand out quite so much let's just take that back ever so slightly i don't want to sort of darken this corner down to make it look dirty okay so we're getting somewhere now we're starting to get a bit more interesting so let's just close that panel down i'm just going to come to the, the lens correction and i'm going to enable the profile correction because i know that the specific lens i was using which is the sigma 70 to 200 that just has a little bit of barrel distortion. So if I just enable this, you'll see that the image will just correct for that issue that we have with the, the lens that I was using. So you can see that just adjusted ever so slightly. So we're looking good. So moving on, the next thing I wanna take a look at are the actual colors in the image themselves. So we can see that the green in the background is kind of fighting for attention with the actual, the singer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close down the, the basics panel. And we're going to come down to the HSL. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly come through to make sure I've got saturation selected. I'm going to choose the direct selection tool and I'm going to come over to the green of the trees. And I'm just going to drop down the color on there ever so slightly. I'm not going to go too mad with this. I just want to sort of take away some of that greenness in the background to allow us to focus on the colors, the reds and the oranges and things like that in the singer. So let's just take 
grab that, drag it down ever so slightly. Don't want to go crazy, still need to have that green. We don't want a black and white colour. So you can see that's reduced the yellow by minus 2 and the greens by minus 28. So if we just turn that on and off, you can see the difference. So you can see it's not crazy, but it's enough to allow us to focus on the actual singer. Now, I don't like the overly red neck, so I'm going to try adjusting that. I'm going to see this might dull everything else down a little bit too much. Let's just take that back ever so slightly. And let's try pumping up some of the colours in his jacket, his waistcoat, I should say. Now, unfortunately, like I say, I could come in now and I could adjust that by using the actual adjustment brush, which I might take a look at a bit later, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. I've kind of got more colour definition on the singer himself. So I'm kind of happy with that. So we'll just drop that back on there. So finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and we're going to sharpen this up now just to get some extra detail in this. So let's just zoom in and we'll close this tab down and we'll come down to the detail panel. Now, as always, the first thing I'm going to do is hold down the Alt key on the keyboard while dragging over the mask in just to control exactly what's going to be sharpened. I say again, I don't want to go crazy. That's looking pretty good. So we can adjust this. Everything on this is completely non-destructive. If I want to adjust that and make it more or less, I can easily edit that at any point. So let's just take the sharpening up. Now you may not see this perfectly on the monitor because it doesn't always translate that well to on screen. And we're just going to take the radius up ever so slightly just to increase the amount of sharpening that's going on there. I'm going to go crazy about 1.4, 1.3, 1.4. That's going to do it for me. So let's just turn that off and see if we can see the de the difference. So you can see ever so slight softness to it. Once we enable it, we just pull back the detail, especially in the hair and the teeth and the chin, and definitely the waistcoat and the microphone and things like that. So let's take a look at the before and after. Now, obviously, you know, we could easily go in and spend a lot more time on this, do a lot more edits, but I think it's already looking considerably better. So let's just say, let's take a look at the before and after. So on the left is where we started after the crop. And this is kind of where we're ending up. So hopefully what you can see is that we've taken a picture that was quite overexposed. We pulled that back. We've not lost no real detail. If we take a look at the histogram in the top, you can see we balanced the image out a lot better. So none of these tools are particularly complex, but putting them together, you can end up with a much better result. Well, I hope you found this video on overexposed images useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and, and subscribe to the channel. We kept up to date with all the new content that we release every single week. If you've got any questions on this technique or any of the other videos covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post and we try to answer every single question asked. Well, until next time, take care.